Chairman Nadler, members of committee, ranking member Jordan, I thank you for inviting me to participate in these very serious hearings today. I want to begin by stating that the prospect of defunding and or dismantling police forces across the country is one of the most unwise, irresponsible proposals by American politicians in our nation's history and makes absolutely no sense at all, at least to me. I believe it is nothing short of the politicizing of current social events in an effort to garner votes during this election season. I also believe that it's a reactionary measure that can and will result in short and long-term damage to American society, particularly in our inner city and urban communities. Now, I recognize the fact that the elimination of excessive force and physical retaliation by officers of the law against American citizens is paramount today. I recognize the fact that racial profiling and the harsh treatment of minorities is a very real reality that must be eliminated immediately. I myself can testify of times in my life when I felt racially profiled by police. I can testify of times in my life when I was pulled over for driving while black. I can testify of giving my grandson, who is now of driving age, the talk of how to properly behave if pulled over by police because, because he had the question of a very real fear of the possibility of death at the hands of police. In fact, my very first interaction with police when I was 13 years old resulted in me being rough up. I could very easily have been George Floyd. George Floyd could have very easily been me, my brothers, my friends, or any number of any other black men in America. However, I do not recommend throwing the baby out with the bathwater by labeling all police officers as bad cops simply because of the bad actions of a rogue segment of those whose job is supposed to be to protect and to serve American citizens. In fact, in certain inner city communities across America, increased funding for police and increased police presence is actually necessary in order to enforce the law and to guarantee the safety and the security of law-abiding members of those communities. As one who was formerly in that street life years ago, I might be a pastor, but I didn't come down from heaven. I came up out of hell with the rest of everybody else. I was formerly in that street life. I know very much about the criminal element, and I can state definitively that the criminal element in and of society would enjoy nothing better than a reduction in police presence and police power. It would allow those with criminal intentions and criminal actions to flourish virtually unchallenged in the communities of America. America. The law-abiding members of society would be directly threatened by the absence of police or the inability of police to respond to criminal activities and in many cases would endeavor to take the law into their own hands to ensure the, their safety and well-being as evidenced by the response of some who decided to defend themselves and their property from vandalism. An absence of police presence could potentially give rise to acts of domestic terrorism, mob rule, gang rule, neighborhood intimidation, oppression, and vigilanteism. Defunding of police departments has already happened in a number of American cities, and rather than remedying problems, has actually made conditions much worse. The city of Cleveland, my hometown, is a prime example of the results of police defunding. In 2004, the city of Cleveland laid off 285 officers. The entire police budget was slashed by 31% to cover basic services. The following units were either disbanded or cut forever. The district strike force units, the narcotics unit was completely cut. SWAT was downsized. The fugitive unit was disbanded. The auto theft unit was disbanded. The intelligent unit was cut to bare bones. The mounted unit was cut 85%. The aviation unit was down completely for three years and is now only utilized during special events. The harbor unit was disabled. The boat sits rotting in a dry dock. The scientific investigation unit was cut 80%. All the lab techs were let go. All the evidence collection is now done by priority. 
The DARE uh, problem, the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program was cut. Community policing was cut 45%. Cleveland went through a decade-long downsizing, which saw department, the department reduce from 1,900 officers to 1,500 officers on average. Zone car coverage, which directly affects citizens, has been cut. Police presence in any given district on any given shift has been cut in half. One and two man units have been cut in half. Response time is dramatically longer if the police show up at all. The murder rates have climbed. The property crime is at record levels. Aggravated robbery statistics are higher. Drug sales, drug use, drug abuse is higher. Drug and alcohol related motor vehicle accidents are the highest they've ever been. Cleveland has went from a relatively safe city per capita to an unbelievably unsafe city. Calls for service have increased even though the, uh, the, the, the population has dropped significantly over the last 20 years. Once safe areas of the city are now unsafe. One, once nice neighborhoods in the city are now not nice. Homicides are up 55% in Cleveland from this time last year. And Cleveland now has a higher murder rate per 100,000 residents than Chicago does. I believe that police departments are only as effective as politicians and their appointees allow them to be. Consequently, politicians and appointees are directly responsible for the state of their police departments. Law-abiding citizens, and I've spoken to a great deal of them, overwhelmingly think that defunding or disbanding police departments is a horrible idea. Community policing is a very viable option to address the needs of inner city communities. Having police in the communities to actually get to know the residents is the best way to obtain the results that we all want. When I was growing up, the residents and the business owners knew the police officers that were assigned to our neighborhoods and their presence was a deterrent to criminal activity. So in short, defunding of police departments in America has already happened and it has proven to be an epic fail. We cannot allow that paradigm to continue if we want the neighborhoods of America to be safe to live in, the streets of America to be safe for residents to walk on, and the communities of America conducive for businesses to thrive in. So I recommend and I agree with the fact that police reform, or better yet, police revision, revision should be enacted. But it has to be one that is sensitive to the stress, tension, pressure and paranoia that policing produces. The fact that on any given day, any given call, any given stop can result in an officer's death can be very challenging mentally, while also being sensitive to the citizens of America who are supposed to be protected by the police and not be enemies of the police, whether in the suburbs or in the inner cities, whether we're black, white, red, yellow, or brown. I really believe that most police officers, most cops began their careers, most bad cops began their careers as good cops, but they allowed the rigors of their job to affect their perspectives and their social interaction with those they are supposed to protect, and they began perceiving those that they are supposed to protect as those they themselves need to be protected from. I'm in agreement, I endorse police reform but it has to be sensitive to both sides of that issue. Thank you for allowing me. God bless you.